All right, all right, all right. First of all, good morning, ladies and gentlemen. I apologize for the lack of talking, dialogue, and conversing-esque videos because uh, those seem to do pretty well, and I think you guys enjoy them uh, because it gives you kind of something to connect with or interact with and whatnot. So today, as you can tell by the title, I want to talk about the summer update slash Loa on and everything that has been going on. Now, let me give a few disclaimers, and I mainly mean one disclaimer. I just got off of work. It is currently 7 in the morning. So if I look a little tired, I just got out the shower. If I slur my words or mess up, I've been up all night working. So please excuse that. I'm going to be drinking an energy drink. So hopefully as the video continues, I will loosen up. And I also haven't recorded a video like this in a while. So maybe a little iffy and I'm not scripting this. So if it's long, my bad, I'll try to cut it. Sorry, my cat was tripping, um, but I'll try to cut it down in places where I think I rambled too much. But yeah. Hope you guys are having a good Sunday. Today is Sunday the 25th. And they tweeted this out yesterday. Now, I was asleep when they tweeted it out. Um, so I've already looked over it for the most part. And I'm not going to lie, I'm pretty excited. Now, I another reason I wanted to do this type of video is because I know a lot of people have been really, really down in the dumps. A lot of people are really on their pessimistic, Debbie Downer, oh my god. Poop game, poop game, yada, yada, yada. And I get it. I get why people are upset. Um, however, um, I personally uh, feel like it's it's a bit much, maybe a bit overreacting. Uh, but you know that's just me. I personally am not too bothered by the daily, you know, content stuff. It would be nice if it was faster. I don't think it would be a bad implementation to make it one or however they want to do it. Um, but yeah, I'm not too pressed. I'm just more so uh, just looking at some of the updates to come and um, things that I'm looking forward to because sometimes that's what you need, right? Like I said, everyone has been really pessimistic and negative recently, and I wanted to make a somewhat positive video, hopefully, to try and, you know, let you know that there's people out there that still are happy somewhat, right? Because um, I've already had a friend or two leave the game. So they sent this out yesterday. Sorry about the ramble. June 24, Smilegate RPG held their low on event. Blah, 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 blah. Talked about a lot of stuff. Uh, below is a list of updates you can find details on in special summer 2023 gift we're planning. With that spoiler, let's dive into the upcoming changes. First of all, this is phenomenal from Amazon or whoever's idea it was to do this because low on was literally the day before this. Literally the like the night before. And within a day, they have this and when we're getting the updates in na and what updates specifically we're getting i think this is amazing big fan so uh building off of previous months another wave of quality of life changes will accompany the july update paving the way for a major batch of progression changes arriving in august so easier progression basic honing uh growth with growth boost extended up to 1490 obviously that is a major 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 w getting to 1490 is the first step in making that transition into the 1500s and pushing further and further to get your character stronger and stronger um, especially because once you hone up to plus 20 on your lower relic gear and you can start transferring over it's a nice fresh start if you haven't done like gotten there uh, personally it is such a nice reset in terms of item level and uh, like honing luck right you're not at like that three percent two percent five percent uh you're at much better rates right but obviously with this it seems they're going to be increasing that which will make it even easier and even better right so they are um increasing the honing rates uh reducing material required like this is just w and gold decrease like by 100 percent. so now you can go all the way up to 1490 you don't have to spend any gold w a legendary wandering merchant will be added to make it easier for players to collect stepping stone cards such as Balthor, Delane, Armin, and Jederico. Now, the reason it's those specific cards, uh, for those who don't know, uh, because they added the two card sets, right? They added Deep Dive and they added You Have a Plan. And Balthor and Delane Armin are a part of those sets as well as a part of the main sets that everyone strives for, right? Balthor is in Deep Dive and the like upgraded version light of salvation and delane armin is in you have a plan and he's in lost wind cliff now 
right away, I, there's a lot of people that like everyone's just looking at the negative, like, oh, it's a wandering merchant. It's going to be so rare. It's going to be so rare. I think this is a really, really good change, especially because based on the Loa on and a lot of things that people have been talking about, they're, they're looking for the new players, right? They're trying to look out for the new players. They're trying to make honing easier. They're trying to, you know, add these new Makoko, Super Makoko Expresses and like all these things to help bring characters up. And I obviously think that gatekeeping is going to happen. You know, if you have two people apply with similar stats and one person has Light of Salvation 30, the other person has you have a plan 30, right? Like there's still going to be gatekeeping. This isn't going to change any of that. However, I had way way no pun intended before i had the rest of my cards like it wasn't I, i've i think i've had way maxed out since like last july and i got light of salvation 30 like two months ago which is crazy because like i, I was not even close to how many way cards i had and like, it's just, I, <laughs> I wish we had Balthor and the Wandering Merchant. He was the last card I needed. I was really struggling to get him. And when you're farming those Abyssal Dungeons, or for people that don't have time to farm those Abyssal, Ab why do I keep having a lisp? Those Abyssal Dungeons, this is a nice way to just, you can be doing your Chaos Dungeons, and then boom, you get an alert on the website. Um, let me see if I have the Wandering Merchant website. Um, because if you are unfamiliar with it, I am sure they will update this and I highly recommend I'll put it in the description um, but there is a lost merchants is the website that's what it's called lostmerchants.com and you can set up notifications for all of the wandering merchants they already updated it for Algacia so if there is a specific report item you're looking for a specific uh, tome like cooking item that you're looking for a, a specific card like a purple card, a green card from a specific uh, region that is in the Wandering Merchant, you can notify and you can just have a tab open and it'll let you know uh, when those things spawn, when they're available. And you have uh, about 25 minutes. I believe Wandering Merchants always spawn at 30 or like 35-ish. But they spawn at 30 and they last until like 55 of the hour. So like right now it's 723 they would spawn at 730 and then despawn at 755 so even if you're in the middle of a chaos dungeon if you're in the middle of a guardian raid you'll have ample time to get notified and then hurry over to get your legendary card obviously it would be nice if they did more but we should be looking at the positives here right they're also going to be giving jaderico which is in the you have a plan set and where else is he because I've been tripping about Jaderico. I think it might have just been you have a plan. The fact that he's getting put in there is good because purple cards are astronomically more common than um, legendaries, obviously, when it comes to... Uh, what do you call it? When it comes to wandering merchants. Um, so it'll be nice to have him in there. He also might be a part of some sets for let's see elemental damage machines insects beasts demon damage okay he's in a demon damage set which is another thing that people be rah, 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 gatekeeping about right you want to have high demon damage because having bonus damage versus demons increases your damage against excuse my language against all like the kazaros legion commanders right Walton, Vicus, Cuckoo, all of them are pretty much demons. So increasing your damage here is one of the minor ways um, that you can increase your damage. And Jaderico, boom, is a part of the set now. And you don't have to worry about doing anything crazy to get those cards. While we're on the topic of cards, if you are struggling with cards, highly, 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 highly recommend making sure you at least do your weekly challenge abyssals. They do not take a lot of time. Max, max 20 minutes. I They normally take me no more than 10 to 15 minutes. You just pug them. I don't even do a party finder. I just click the join party. Nine times out of ten, you're not going to struggle. And you get these card sets where they have, as you can see, like for Jaderico specifically, it says on the bottom, you can get them from card pack, Ebony Leaf card pack. And the Challenge Abyssals give you a card pack that has a bunch of uh, sub card packs within it. The Ebony Leaf card pack is one of them. Right, and then they have like Desolate Meadow card pack for Veru, right? I'm just showing you guys some examples, right? Fearless Knight is another one of those little card packs. So if you're trying to get green cards, blue cards, right? Everyone's always uh, about legendaries, but if you're looking for a specific green, blue, gray, like those types of cards, 
make sure you're doing your challenge abyssals and trying to get those card packs because you get 10 a week uh from the challenge abyssal you can get 11 or 12 if you get the ones from the auction as well but enough talking with the cards sorry i went off on a tangent let's move on players will no longer need to use fions to move ability stones and accessories to other characters within the same roster However, moving an item within the roster will count against the number of trades for that item. That is fine. Now, this is a huge, huge, huge W. And I don't know about you guys, but there has been many times where I get a character. I'm like, oh, damn, wish this was on my Paladin. I'm not spending 15 Fions on him. I don't need it that desperately. I'll just trash it or sell it or whatever, right? Or you get an earring and you're like, oh, I wish I could just put this on my other character. But you don't want to spend the Fions. Right? Maybe it's not going to sell for anything, so you're like, let me just give it to a different character. Maybe they can use it. And you're just like, ah, but the Fions, what the Fions? Because Fions are freaking expensive, man. Super, super expensive. Especially for people who aren't bussing or aren't getting good drops or aren't selling lots of things, aren't selling gems. You're going to struggle because Fions get really, really expensive. So I think that is very, very good. It's also really nice for people who plan on um pre-purchasing jewelry for characters right a lot of times like for example when slayer came out or when reaper came out people were pre-buying their jewelry with like raid captain ambush master um or like cursed all right like all grudge all of that stuff they were pre-buying the jewelry before it got too expensive so that when the class came out they could just mail it to themselves and not have to worry about competing with everyone else on the market and then end up overpaying for the jewelry this is going to totally help for that because now you won't have to spend fions twice for it, right? Because if you buy something, 15 fions, and you mail it to yourself, that's another 15 fions. You're paying double the fions just to get the piece over to the character that you desire that jewelry on. So this is really, really, really good. Battle items will now be roster bound. I don't think I need to explain why that's such a good thing. That's huge. If you have characters that you wanted to try out or characters that you used to enjoy and you used to do guardian raids on or used to do raids on and they have leftover battle items you can throw them in the roster storage uh, when you're doing raids constantly guardian raids you go through battle items very 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 fast so having them be tradable and just like tradable within the roster is going to be a very very nice change oh my god i'm so juiced for this one sorry i need to get that out the materials to craft a relic brush house gear will be removed instead players will be able to earn phantom intentions that is the crafting material for the ancient gear, right? So that's these things right here, Phantom Intentions. They're getting rid of the Phantom Horns, and we're just going to have Phantom Intentions. Like, <sighs> from normal difficulty, rewards will improve for both normal and hard modes. I cannot tell you how good, like, oh, I'm so excited. I'm so happy for this change. And for a few reasons. One, I personally don't like to run Brawl Hard. I have done it. I've done it 10 times. I've done it way more than 10 times. But I got my, like, the one to six, like, ten times or whatever for my pet, right? And I promise you, I've been doing Brawl one to four buses since for normal mode. Because one to, I can do one to six hard, or I can duo bus one to four normal. We usually sell those for anywhere from six to 12k gold, and it's a duo bus. So at minimum, six, 12, 18, me and my duo get... 18,000 gold per bus, which is very, very nice, obviously. And if it's 12K, you're getting 12, 24, 36,000 gold per bus, which we have sold for. We sold one for 12K this week, I'm pretty sure. And so now we're not, what we used to do is we would bus one of four and then like do hard mode five, six, so that we could just get a little bit, get the 16 of the ancient mats here, 16 there, and just like keep stacking, keep stacking, keep stacking. And now we can just do bro one of four normal it's much easier it's much more chill we don't have to worry about that nonsense that is five six and you can still get your ancient gear which is so so nice because you need ancient gear in order to upgrade to the level three set right with kai and Gel, they introduced upgrading our relic sets up to level three you cannot upgrade relic gear you can only upgrade ancient pieces right so as you see my chest piece my pants and my gloves are level three if my weapon was still relic rarity it literally would not show up on the upgrade menu it would not be possible so this just makes getting the ancient gear so much easier because you're also i'm assuming going to need it for a con to be able to transfer into a con ancient this is w so so nice 
Um, Arcturus Touch will give additional will give additional uh, clear rewards and view more rewards for Legion raids, and will be extended to Kakusei and Brashaza normal hard mode. W. That's the Arcturus Touch is what I believe the Makokos get for like newer returning players. <laughs> no complaints from me. Next, we got Maharaka Festival, the summertime Maharaka Festival. Return to new activities, Bass in the Sun, yada, 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 yada. Hey, bro, new mini games. I usually play the mini games at least one time. If the rewards are good enough, I'll do them more and more. I think last summer we had the thing where you can like pick up the Makokos and try and get gold. Fam, I was there whenever I could. I, and I think I got 15K gold in total from like the whole event. I got like 5K gold three times. So if there's something dope like that, I'll gladly spend my time doing a mini game a day. Um, but yeah, Maharako is super, super lit. Really good rewards in the event shop. There was a, an animal skin, I believe, last year. So for anyone who's trying to get another animal skin, you know what I'm saying? Maybe you got a character that, that wants one. Hopefully they put another one in there, but we'll see. So that's just for July. So July is going to be really, really good. Obviously, we're also getting Hell Clown, which I am very excited for. We're also getting the Music Box of Memories, which I believe is a new collectible. And I'm assuming they're showing... I don't know why they're showing Nineveh, actually, to be honest. I probably have to look at the roadmap again, but who cares? Maybe it's a rapport. All uh, the bulk of changes to improve the new and returning player experience will be added in August with the consolidation of Tier 1 and 2, comma, easier progression, comma, QOL changes, comma, and more. As the August update includes the Akan Legion Raid, new and returning players will be able to earn older Legion Raid materials much faster to catch up. Better progression events are added to help new slash returning players catch up for current players to quickly level up a new Aromancer or other classes and uh, they're interested in adding to their roster. Here's a full list of the specifics. So, for the progression event with August update, we're getting a Power Pass, W, um, and uh, upgraded Hyper Express event. When the players participate in the event, they will receive gear and skills. Okay. The honing boost will last up to 14, uh, item level 1490 with additional support up to 1540. So with the honing boost going up to 1490, it's going to be a 1490 express pass. But before that, we're also getting the nerf to 1490, which I don't know if you guys have ever pushed a character with an express pass. But the Express Pass absolutely juices how much mats you get to push up a character. I've pushed up characters in Express Passes with literally zero prep. My Slayer is 1560 right now. I did not, I was not expecting to make a Slayer at all. I did not prep at all. I did not have gold saved up. I did not have mats, shards, nothing saved up. And I was still able to juice her through the Express Pass very, very quickly. Now, obviously, if you have savings, it'll be easier, but the point is I did that and there was no nerf at the time, right? They're going to nerf it even more and they're still juicing you through it, which means you're going to have a lot of leftover mats to push even higher into like the 1540 that they're talking about, right? They've already nerfed up to 1590 and then they're giving us a pass that's going to give you a small boost up there. Like this is gonna be a, a juicy pass so make sure when you pick your character it's a character that you think you would enjoy or you know you would enjoy because this is going to be a juicy pass i can already see it rewards including gems will be better than the previous hyper express events hmm i did not even notice that um but i wonder if that means they're going to be giving us sixes instead of fives we shall see um, or if they're going to incorporate the Loa on thing with like the sevens and whatnot. We'll see. We'll see. I'm not going, you know, but I mean, level fives is I, right, you know what I mean? Consolidated T1 and T2. Because it's important to progress quickly to T3, we will consolidate repetitive progression for players experiencing, experiencing the earlier tiers of the game. We plan to combine the early tiers of Lost Ark in the following ways. The tier two item level phase will be adjusted from 802. What? From 802 to 1225 for... From 802 to 1225 to 500 to 1100. 1225. What? Original T1 slash T2 weapons and armor will be updated to new T2 gear. Eliminated negative accessory engraving effects in T2. And one of the engravings on accessories will be a class engraving. Okay. Abyssal dungeon gear looted or crafted from abyssal dungeon and abyss raids will have gear set effects. Crafting recipes will be adjusted. I mean, didn't they already have gear set effects? 
Hmm. Wipe mechanics will be adjusted in many abyssal dungeons to help new players learn the game. Players will no longer be wiped but receive damage. I said, nice. Now, this is a big, big W. This one specifically right here. I won't say big W, but it is a W because a lot of people focus on a lot of the Legion raid content and like later content. But for those of us who had to play the game or were playing the game when it was new and we were all kind of growing in item level together doing some of these uh these abyss dungeons were like our first taste of what bosses can be like in lost art right the our first taste of mechanics and and having to do things in order to kill the boss or else the boss will restore hp and stuff like that and bro this dungeon right here i remember struggling so bad with our eight man group we couldn't even complete it and the game went down for maintenance we had to leave we couldn't complete it, bro. We had to complete it the following week. It was actually so, so, so difficult because there was stagger checks and all this stuff. And so now it'll be less intimidating for a new player to get into. Obviously, if you have someone who's high item level, they can just one shot everything anyways. But um, if you are starting the game with a friend and you want to get into it and do it, they're nerfing it to make it a bit easier, a bit more friendly to people who do not understand what is going on, which is good. And it's also a pretty fun experience because this raid specifically, the Gate of Paradise, has stuff in this Abyss dungeon that is unlike literally anything else in the game. Up to 1580, up to 1600, up to where they are in, well, from what I've seen at least, there's not a single dungeon that has had a similar concept of being underwater and having to get air and having a breath meter and stuff like that. That was exclusive to this dungeon which was a very cool different fun thing to experience um so i definitely recommend if you are if you are seeing this and you're a new player you're thinking about trying it and you see this try it at least once just to experience it because it's unlike anything else you will experience in the game all right t2 gems will be removed players can increase skill tree level starting in t1 nice to minimize fatigue to help players that are progressing guardian raid entry levels and rewards will be changed guardian raid entry levels and rewards will be changed okay so they're probably going to be lowering some um guardian rate maybe like the thresholds won't be as high so maybe something like instead of going um 302 340 380 420 it'd be like 302 320 you know 360 400 or something like that or 380 you know like, I, I imagine it'll be something like that where they're like just kind of toning it down a bit uh gatherable expansion level one research will be removed gatherable expansion level two will be changed to gatherable expansion research gatherable expansion let's see all research gather gather a bull expansion level one let's see what that is stronghold farm add tier two gatherables to farm crop ah okay 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 so this is what this is regarding is your farm in your stronghold um being able to put tier two mats in it they're going to be obviously changing it since they're just consolidating t1 and t2 so they're going to be fixing that some research related to the farm will be removed and changed t2 related crafting recipes will be removed t2 calder spice will no longer be used now this is this is actually really really good um i believe in if you're familiar with t3 honing we use these fusion materials they're uh called these things superior array these are the ones that we use now um but they've been upgraded right so before we used to use like basic array has, um, there was like common array has, and then before that there was the calder ones which were t2 um, and it was just like an extra mat for some reason that was required to hone now you don't need it so w tower stage will be changed to fit the tier consolidation both shadow spire and fate spire will have 20 floors item level entry requirements will be adjusted and the difficulty and rewards will be rebalanced nice now um the tower if you don't know what it is gives a lot of mats it is also very good to do your first time going through because the first time going through you get less mat esque drops and more um roster friendly drops like runes rapport items engraving books and stuff like that obviously it says the rewards are going to be rebalanced so they'll do whatever they do um but it does get pretty difficult and it is 50 floors so it is very time consuming going from floor one to floor 50 so the fact that they're nerfing that down is w w w, w. 
engraving updates engraving system unlocks will be changed to level 50 um some engravings can be obtained and used before level 50. so i believe as it is right now you are able to use engravings once you finish lutera which is like the first main continent of questing um there's a quest there that once you finish i think you normally finish around like 24 26 ish um is when you uh, get access to use engravings. so they're changing it so now it'll just be uh when you get to level 50 i'm assuming some engravings can be obtained and used before that um if the if the engraving system is already open the engraving can be applied the same way as before even after the update starting levels to all engravings will be level one upon unlocking the engraving system now this person this should have been in the game from the jump <laughs> this should have been in the game from the very when they first launched it in korea this should have been in the game so what that means is when you open up your engraving support right when you look at your engravings you can see i have a bunch of grayed out engravings right and the way engravings work if you're unfamiliar if you're a new player watching this is you get these books right so like let's look at ether predator for example right it says use uncommon ether predator engraving recipe i have five out of twenty so we have these boxes right so like these are from i think the challenge guardian raid i think these are from the challenge guardian raid and what you do is you open up these boxes and you can see there are green pouches and the green pouches have green engraving books now let's say i wanted to open up ether predator ones and i open up and i go from 5 out of 20 to 20 out of 20 it'll go to a level one engraving it'll look like one of these except instead of times nine it would say times three in order to get upgraded from that you then need to get the blue books right 20 of the blue books and then when you want to go above you need 20 of the purple books and then when you got to max it out you need 20 of the legendary books and the green books what happened early on is a lot of the community <clears throat> as we were progressing all kind of progressed at a similar rate so when everyone was getting green books as drops from from guardian raids from chaos dungeons from abyss dungeons they were cheap then we moved on to tier two we were getting blue books then we moved on to tier three we were getting purple books and then we started getting legendary books and what happened was when everyone was getting the legendary books and the purple books we stopped getting the greens and the blues so those went up in price because people weren't getting them as frequently and you still need them to try and get your engraving right now you don't need green books they'll just start from blue i'm assuming just go blue purple legendary and the main good thing about that is you can try out engravings as soon as you have access to them you can try them out you can double equip them to like have them on your character and see what they feel like before you decide if you want to continue investing um into leveling up the engraving now you can try it right because there's as you see there's there's engravings here i've never used just never had equipped never because this is account wide so all of my characters have the same setup so there's i've just never used some of them <laughs> right or i have to get them on jewelry or whatever it is right so that is a really really good update in my opinion um since all engravings can be used after unlocking the system the uncommon engraving recipes will be removed so that's the green ones um in-game compensation will be re rewarded okay um t3 progression updates the first phase of t3 uh will be updated from level 1302 to 1490 to 1250 to 1490 so they're changing the base tier 3 like entry level to 1250 okay the leap stones used during this phase will be great on our leap stones so that's good um it sounds like what they're doing here is um as it is right now instead of when you first get to tier three you use honor leap stones when you get to 1370 you begin using great honor leap stones and when you get to 1490 i think you begin using marvelous honor leap stones and it sounds like when they say we're gonna just be using great honors they're just going to be getting rid of this from the jump which is nice because how it works is if you have leftover honor leap stones right like let's say there's an express pass and the express pass is for like you know the 1340 portion they give you a bunch of honor leap stones and let's say you get lucky you get up to 1370 now you need great honors but you have a bunch of these leftover honor ones bound there is a conversion shop where you can convert five to one so five honor leap stones for one great honor but it's just bad rates so now you'll have left less baggage left over, right? So that just sounds really, really good to me. 
Um, common Areha Fusion Material will become rare grade Areha Fusion Material. Okay. So they're going to be, instead of same thing, just like with the Leap Stones, there was different, uh, the Fusion Mats that I was telling you about earlier. There was a different one prior to 1370 and post 1370. Sounds like they're just bunching that together. Simple Areha will become a legacy item. Cool. Original item level 1302 and 1340 gear will be consolidated into one gear set. Only levels will be compressed accordingly. The new gear can be honed up to gear level 20 as the max gear uh, level gets adjusted from 25 to 20. Gear levels and honing levels will be adjusted. Okay, they're just going to fix all of the item levels on the gear and like change the honing and all, all that stuff. Uh, crafting ingredients for each Relic Legion Commander gear set will be unified. Um, so I'm assuming as it is right now, they like weapons and gloves can be, um, mm, mm, mm. okay. So I think what they mean by this is as it is right now, let me see if I can show you low key. Um, as it is right now, the materials that you need from the Legion raid like Vaulton or Vicus in order to craft your relic set, it varies based on the set that you're trying to craft. So for example, some sets, um, you can craft four items with Vicus mats, two items with Vaulton mats, or three items with Vaulton mats, three items with Vicus mats, or four items with Vaulton, right? You get what I'm saying, right? So for some of them, you need to do one uh, Legion raid more than the other in order to get your set. <laughs> This was a big issue early, early on because we didn't <laughs> we didn't have Vicus. We had Vaulton before Vicus. Um, let's see. Nope, not here, not here. Is there where's the Legion? Here we go, here we go, here we go. So, like, um, let's look at here, right? So, no, 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 bad example. So for a nightmare, for example, right? For a nightmare, the weapon, the helmet, and the chest piece were Vaulton materials. So you get chest piece, helmet, and uh, the weapon from Vaulton. And then the pants were from Vicus, gloves were from Vicus, and the shoulders were from Vicus. So it sounds like what they're doing now is instead of it having be different per thing, right? So like for Entropy, the weapon is not from Vic or the the weapon is from Vaulton, the helmet is from Vaulton, but then the other four pieces are from Vicus. Instead of it being, you know, two, four, four, two, three, three, however, it's just all going to be the same thing. The weapon and gloves will always be from Vicus. The head, shoulder, chest, and pants will always be from Vaulton, I believe is what they're trying to do here. Um, due to the adjustments at T3, 1302 to 1490, the required item level when using certain items will change. And some stronghold research at the phase, okay, they're just going to be balancing everything. Enhanced rewards and earlier raids will be improved. Yes. Increase the drop rate of accessories with class engravings for relic gear. Yes, yes, yes. This is massive. Those people who were not playing the game around the 1370 item level ish area when you got to tier three originally you started off at 1302 item level you honed up to 1325 and 1340 and that allowed you to do the first abyss dungeon in tier three that is the arejas right the areja prevesa that is this dungeon right here right areja prevesa areja as well so 1325 13 oh this is 1325 now it used to be 1340 um but yeah so you used to be able to do that and when you first started doing it, um, all of the jewelry that you would get dropped was like guaranteed class engraving. So it would have your one of your class engravings and something else. So it was much easier to get class engraving jewelry for your character um, because it just always had a class engraving. You knew it was going to have a class engraving. You just had to hope it was like good quality or good combat stat or, you know, a good accompanying engraving, etc. cetera. Um, I don't think they're going to do that, right? They're not going to make it guaranteed but they will definitely improve it, which is good because when we had that, right? And then in Argos, when you got to 1370, it was the same thing, it was all class engraving. But when we got to 1415 and 1445 and we started doing uh, Vaulton, it wasn't like that, which makes class, that's why a lot of the class engraving pieces right now are super expensive because it's much lower chance to get. Increase the drop rate of accessories with class, okay, that's what we just did. Level four or five skill tree amulets will be added to the Legion rate exchange. It's Bro, this is so good. This is so good. This should have been in the, in, Oh, this is going to be especially, especially good for NA. And I'm going to tell you why. There are some people who are going to want to play classes that... Bro, why does my phone keep going off? Um, There are some people that are going to want to play classes that are less popular, right? People who want to play things like Scout. People who want to play 
uh, uh, Pistolier or maybe Demonic or maybe something like Control Glavier, I think is probably a bit less uh, popular than Pinnacle, right? There's lots of specs that are just less popular than the other, right? Think of like remaining energy to Surge, right? There's still a lot of remaining energy people, but Surge is usually the more popular. Firepower Enhancement Artillerist. A lot of these specs are less popular. When they're less popular, that means you have less people doing Chaos, dungeon, chaos Dungeons to get the tripods required. And when there's less people getting the tripods, there's less people listing the tripods. And especially in, in, in NA with our limited listings, a lot of people don't want to waste a potential listing for something that's only going to sell for 50 to 200 gold. When I was working on my scout, I was working on Arthurian skill and I literally could not get my tripods. It wasn't because I kept failing them. I had gold. I had Fions. There was just none on the market and I would not get them dropped from my chaos dungeons. So it makes the process of getting tripods much more... Like, it just takes so much longer than it needs to. And that's a big, big deal because tripods are one of, if not the biggest power spike that you can get in this game. Getting your tripods from level 1 to level 5 can essentially double your damage as a character. So getting them is very, 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 very important. And the fact that they are making a non-RNG way um, to get them, if you don't know what the amulets are, the amulets guarantee the tripod. It's not a 20% chance or anything like that. A The amulets are guaranteed. They give you the drop. They give you the thing. So the fact that you'll be able to buy them is going to be fat. At least that's what I'm assuming that they're going to be, because obviously the regular thing is called an amulet, but there are the hope amulets that are guaranteed of the tripod. So I'm assuming those are going to be the ones that are in the shop. It'd be kind of stupid. I mean, maybe, maybe they just put them in the, I don't know. We'll see. We'll see. Increase the scope of the Makoko buff, blah, 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 blah. Yeah, that we talked about that earlier. Procyon's protection, item level 1490. Cool. Increase the battle item support in Guardian Raids up to Kungalanium. Nice. Um, after Kungalanium is Kaligos. But Kungalanium is a really good one to have for the battle item support because you use a lot of battle items in Kungalanium. A lot of corrosives, destruction bombs, pheromones, flares. Use a lot of all that. Uh, ship skin cosmetics and effects will be separated in the settings for convenience. W. Everyone pretty much uses the same ship skin because they all want the same skill effect, right? With a 30% chance to reset your spacebar meter and now you can show off whatever skin you want to show off while still having that effect our waiting times for event islands will be eliminated interesting sailing coins and keys will be consolidated and changed from five to two reduce sailing quests and playtime gate quests will be removed and their rewards will be rebalanced and rewards as rewards for the content now some people may not understand this but this is so good and I'm going to tell you why. I don't know what that noise was. Don't talk about it. So, Pete, I talked about it in my Sea Bounties video a while back. But the Sea Bounties give some fat rewards, right? There's a few reasons you would want to do Sea Bounties, right? There are masterpieces. There is a purple wealth rune. There is a lot of silver available, right? And like phew, 10 mil silver a focus rune. There's lots of things that you can get from sea bounties. They are a very good um, collectible to go for. Now, there are a few that are essentially unobtainable to my knowledge. As you can see, I have four here under the title shipwreck. Now, what is a shipwreck? <laughs> Most of you probably don't even know and never even heard of it. I'm gonna tell you why. <sighs> to my knowledge, I'm pretty sure this is how it works. In order to get the shipwreck sea bounty this is what you must do on certain days they have sailing events sailing co-op events you do these sailing co-op events and upon completion you get a key on other days there are gate events right 
Now, the key that you got from the sailing co-op event will match up with one of the gates. So let's say you got the key of endurance. You then have to do the gate of endurance. When you do the gate of endurance, you will then do another mini game. Upon completing that mini game, you will get a chest. In order to open the chest, you need to use the key. When you use the key to open the chest, you have a very small chance of getting a shipwreck, a shipwreck map. Then you have to go find the shipwreck. And upon getting to the shipwreck, you have a very small chance of getting the sea bounty from it. Which means you have a small chance upon a small chance, which makes it almost impossible. I have never gone for them, but I had someone in my chat who was a completionist player in the very, like towards the beginning of the game. And he did every single sailing co-op event that popped up. He did them every freaking day. He would stack up like 30, 40 keys and he would go to the gates and just unlock, 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 unlock. And in his entire attempt of getting those, because he was trying to get all the collectibles, he got five shipwrecks. Not a single sea bounty from it. So once he told me that, I'm like, I'm not going for it. And so it's also poop because like, look, the sailing co-op event is on Sunday, but the gate doesn't show up until Monday. What if they have work on Monday and they can't do it? It's a stupid concept. It's so stupid. Um, and they're changing it. So they're going to reduce uh, the sailing quest, how long they take. The gates are just going to be removed and the rewards are just going to be like, that's just W, which will hopefully the other thing is the, the sailing quests um require people so hopefully it doesn't require as much teamwork so that people can do them solo um or with just less people overall and then you could just try and get your shipwrecks hopefully all that stuff will be rebalanced uh to be a more realistic rate so people can go for silver the wealth runes etc etc or do fun uh sailing events with their friends because some of the events are pretty lit uh, more activities and rewards will be coming with the Maharaka Festival. Uh, perfect for Arcasian adventurers in any tier of their journey. This will be part two. That'll be later in August. And then 2023 Summer Update Player Gift. Um, I'm a little confused by this because it says special animal skin and then bunny skin. But this don't look like an animal. You know what I mean? This is the gingerbread. Which I'm low-key juice for because if y'all ain't seen the Warriors low-key low -key look good in the... Hey, yo. Pause. But the gingerbread fit looks cool on the warrior um, is what I meant. And then we get the beetle mount. These are the beetle mounts. You can pick one. Uh, two mil silver, dub. A uh, hundred of each battle item, dub. Card XP, dub. Selection chest with Kadan and Thamon, dub. Die, dub. Level five tripod, dub. Level four tripods, okay. And a hundred Fions. So hopefully they get this package to us sooner than later um because who doesn't want a gingerbread outfit and a bunny costume don't answer that i know there's plenty of people that don't care for that stuff but two mil silver fions and tripods is a www but that is pretty much it that is i want to talk about it because i feel like there's a lot of good things to look at and everyone's just so nah, 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 you know like with the thundercloud or the storm cloud over their head just pouring rain constantly and it's not all bad it's not all bad right at the end of the day i don't know about everyone else but i personally have played games in much worse states than this and lost ark is still relatively young as a five-year-old game and i i think it's five or four years right four or five years old i've played games that have been around for 15 years and they suck some of y'all know what i'm talking about but the fact that games after 15 years still can't improve and a game like Lost Ark, I feel like listens to their community, especially with all the backlash that's been happening recently. I think they still have room to improve. And usually when there's backlash like this, they react and listen. And so hopefully um, it'll still be good. Hopefully they can make these changes and everything will be goody, goody. And with the upcoming updates, things will only get better. That's a pretty hopeful outlook, but yeah. I ain't got another game to play, so it's all I got. <laughs> Anyways, it's been your boy, Haiga. I hope you guys enjoyed chatting with me and hanging out. Until next time, it's been your boy. Peace out.